Thank you for watching this project help video for lesson 18. I will help you answer each question in the project by providing step-by-step -step instructions using example problems. A good strategy might be to pause the video after each example and then work the corresponding problem in the project. All right, let's get started with question one. Mr. Dilley, that's me, is studying the growth of a particular redwood tree and finds that the tree is growing at a constant rate over time. The function that represents the growth in feet is f of x equals 1.7x plus 81. x is the time in years that has passed since Mr. Dilley started measuring the tree. What is the rate of change for the growth of the tree? All right, so this is a particularly easy question. Let me get back to the slide. Because remember, this function here is the equation of a line. And it's one that you should be very familiar with. We're just using function notation now. But this f of x is taking the place of y. And this equation has the form y equals mx plus b. All right, so by now you should understand that the m, that coefficient of the x, represents the slope of the function, which is the same as the rate of change. And the b, this constant number out here, represents the y-intercept, or starting position, or height, or in this case height, uh, initial value of something. Right, and this has that form, right? It's like y equals mx plus b. Okay, so what is the rate of change? The slope is the rate of change. That is the rate of change. So uh, make sure you ingrain that in your head, right? Whenever we have a slope, it is talking about some kind of rate of change of something. All right, so what is the rate of change for the growth of the tree? Well, here it is. No math to do. I'm just pointing to it. It's the coefficient for x, 1.7. That easy. Next question, just as easy. Okay, well, we just talked about that's the slope. That's the rate of change, right? It's that coefficient for x. The number at the end here, that's our y-intercept or it's our starting height in this case. So when x is zero, that means at year zero, that means when I first measured the tree, the tree was 81 feet. That's the initial or starting height of the tree. Do you see how that works? Because right here, if I replaced x with zero, zero times anything is zero, then we would get the output of zero plus 81 or just 81. So that's, that's what we mean by the starting height or the initial height. Oh, just 81. So I can tell that just by looking at the function. Again, no work to do. 1.7, there's our rate of change. 81, that's our starting height, just from the equation. And like we just talked about, that initial height, right? What is the initial height? We also call that the y-intercept when we're graphing it. Because right, that would be when x is 0. You know, Any point on the y-axis has an x-coordinate of 0. In this case, 0, 81. That would be our y-intercept. Right, let's see if anything else makes sense. Well, it's not the slope, because 1.7 is the slope. That's, the, that's how fast the tree is growing per year. Right? It's not the x-intercept. We don't have anything in the equation that talks about that. Uh, it's not the rate of change, because rate of change means slope, which is that 1.7. Oh, it is the starting height, though. Initial height, starting height, y-intercept. It's all that number at the end there. All right, so now describe the domain of the given function. Is there a restriction on the domain? Explain. All right, so let's remind ourselves once again what domain means, right? So the Domain is the set of inputs, all possible inputs for our function. And in this case, the domain is going to be restricted right, by our situation, that we're talking about a growing tree here. And we started measuring it at a certain time. And then I defined our domain variable, our x, to be the number of years after that. So ask yourself again, can we have negative numbers? 
Well, that would mean that time was negative, somehow going backwards. I'm not going to go backwards in time and somehow be able to measure the tree 10 years ago. So no negative 10. All right, so other than that though, I think any other value would make sense. We can have fractional amounts of time, right? I can have one year, I can have half a year, a quarter of a year, uh, a point one of a year. So all those numbers are good. So if I were to explain the domain of this function, I would say that it was all values greater than or equal to zero. It's all values greater than or equal to zero. They might say that in your lesson or in your checkpoints as all real numbers greater than or equal to zero. And so I like all real numbers greater than or equal to zero. So since we define the input variable, the domain to be x, then it's it's all x such that x is greater than or equal to zero. All right, so the last question here says, describe what the graph of the given function looks like, right? And identify the y-intercept, the slope, and an additional point on the line. All right, so here's our function that we've been working with, right? The growth of this tree. All right, so clear when we plug in an x for or an x, a zero for the x, that's our initial height, that's our starting value. So back here when I first started measuring it, remember down here is our time. That's on our x-axis, and that over here is our height for the y variable. Our initial height was 81. All right, so then I need to get another point, and we can get any other point that we want. All right, so if we wanted to say any, just give me another point. It didn't uh, specify what point. So usually I just pick numbers that seem like they might be easier to work with. So if I plug in a 10, so where did this point come for? I made it up. I picked a value for X. In this case, I picked 10 and I plugged it in for the X. So then when I work that out, I got the answer or the Y value of 98 because 1.7 times 10 is 17. And then you would add that to 81, and 17 plus 81 is 98. All right, so then I know that I have the, when x was 10, y is 98. So let's go ahead and just interpret that in the context of the problem, right? It means that in after 10 years, the tree is going to be 98 feet tall. Remember, this is time down here in years. If I were to ask you more questions about the slope, I could ask, what does this 1.7 really represent in the context of this problem? Remember, the 1.7 is the rate of change, all right, and our units are feet in time. So this means we are growing, this tree is growing at 1.7 feet per year. It's like a unit rate. How many feet does it grow in one year? It grows right there, 1.7. All right, so go ahead and answer the corresponding problems in your project.